What is up? Welcome, welcome, welcome. Uh, this is a bad positioning. I've got my camera or me in the chat over there. I'll put you guys there for right now. Uh, I hope everyone can hear me all right. I bet the music is kind of loud though. Can everyone hear me? I know the lighting is really dramatic. It's just because it's morning here. Um, our levels okay? We need to go. We need to get through the whole stream set up uh, very quickly this time because I'm about six hours late to this game jam. Uh, the chat is not working though. Um, let me see if I can fix that. There we go. Now the chat should look pretty normal. Yes. Yes. Uh. Okay, everyone tell me if the levels are bad, because this is your last time to adjust them uh, before we get started on everything. And also, yeah, good morning. Hi, everyone. Good morning, uh, good evening, good wherever you are. Boys, girls, and NBs, welcome to the stream today. Uh, and tomorrow, I don't know how much of it I'm going to be streaming. I'm doing the, uh, I don't know how you say it. The, the Ludum Dare, Ludum Dare, uh, the, the big game jam, uh, that's happening. I'm going to put the chat right there. Um, the theme is summoning. So, and I've already got some ideas, uh, that, so I'll explain that all while we're, uh, while we're doing it. Um... Yes, is there anything else I need to explain? 
I'm just trying to make sure I've, I've, uh, the 48 hour time window is quite, is, can be quite stressful. So I'm trying to make sure that I'm, uh, not missing anything in terms of introduction. Yes, the theme is summoning. Okay, I think we're just gonna get started with that. I'm gonna put the chat over here. So I'll look at it occasionally, um, but I will need to focus. Um, let me make sure that I'm not gonna dox myself. Uh, uh, yeah, but I think I should be good. Audio gone? Wait, my audio is gone? Yeah, okay, the music is gone. It's just very quiet. You guys need to get some better quality headphones. <laughs> okay, 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 okay. Um, there we go. Oh, wait. Well, it looks like this is a uh, mess. There we go. Everything looks as it should now. Sorry, my OBS was uh, was bugged. Okay. Um, okay, everyone can hear me, right? No audio issues. No nothing. This is um this is the uh, window opening code and the ludum there. You're allowed to start with a tiny bit of starter code. So this is what I've got. This is what it draws. We're starting with nothing. Um, I'm also using, so we're going to be doing it in C. I'm going to be using the uh, this um, this big like library of C utilities that I have and we really need to get started. Okay, it's 9 a.m. I'm not streaming for 48 hours straight. Uh, that would uh, that would end me, I think. <laughs> okay. Um, so the theme is, let me go here. Oh, well, I'm not logged in. So hopefully it'll let me see the theme. Yeah. Okay. So the theme, the theme is summoning. Um, and I think, uh, hot take, I think summoning is a bad theme because it's really, uh, limiting in terms of like, like when you think of summoning, basically I looked at the theme like two hours ago when I got up and I was disappointed, but <laughs> when you think of summoning, it's either going to be like something magic or it's going to be something like it's a, like a court summons that which is, you know, basically there's no, uh, there's no other, uh, it's not a very broad theme, I think at least. Um, so I, my idea. And yeah, so it's in C with SDL, um, and then I'm using Sokol, um, which all of that you'll see in a second. So my idea for the summoning theme is um, you are a corporate, it's basically gonna be a game made up of a couple different mini games, if I, depending on how much time or how much I'm able to finish. Uh, it's a game uh, uh, where you are a corporate lawyer and your boss has got a summons to come to court and then you have three different mini games, uh, which I'm forgetting what they should be now. Yes, okay, the first mini game is about burning evidence. Um, you're trying to make sure that your boss doesn't get convicted of any uh, wrongdoing in this massive uh, court system because uh, he was summoned to court. I've got some notes. Uh, yes, the first thing you're gonna do is you're gonna burn evidence. Then you're going to, that's the first mini game. The second mini game is going to be liquidating witnesses. Um, and the third game is going to be a mini game about bribing uh, judges, the remaining judges, jury members, um, and, and witnesses uh, that will actually be testifying at your, uh, at your boss's trial. So, that's what we're doing. Um, people are asking if I'm gonna make a game according to chat. No, I'm not because that would end really poorly. Uh, not that 
it would just be too chaotic not to diminish uh, anyone in chat. Um, yes. And hopefully soon this sunbeam will, will go away and I'll actually be able to see things. Um, yes. So, okay, we need to, we need to get started. So what is the first thing that we need? So right now, uh, I hope everyone can see the code all right over here. I'm going to, I think I'm going to have this set up with the code on the left and the, and the game in the right, um, over here. Uh, so, uh, what do we even need to do for the first thing? It's so hard to focus on the streaming and game jamming at the same time. Both are like stressful in and of themselves, but combined, it's like my, my mind just, just drawing a blank. Uh, what do we need? Okay. The first thing we need to do is we need a font. So, oh yeah, there's the thumbnail for everything. Um, I don't actually remember if you're allowed to use fonts in the Ludum there. Are you allowed to? Ludum there font rules. Rules. Fonts. Ah, fonts are allowed. Oh yeah, so I'm doing, so the jam is like, it's, uh, it happens every six months, um, or at least it has in a while. Yes, I'm using Imscripten for this, and I'm using C. Um, the There are two different like categories, I think, or maybe there's three, I don't remember what the third is, but the two main ones is the compo, which is the one that I'm doing, which is 48 hours, you're supposed to work alone, and everything has to be, actually, I don't know if you need to work alone. I don't think you do, but, and everything has to be made completely from scratch. Um, and then the other one is the jam, which is 72 hours, and you work on teams, and that's not what I'm doing. I'm doing the combo. This is my second ever game jam, by the way, or at least my second ever Ludum there. So um, we'll see how it how it goes. So fonts are allowed. So I'm going to do this. We need to draw a font because I need to get some stuff up on the screen. The, so the first mini game is going to be about burning evidence. So what I need with that is um, I want uh, small like files of evidence with different colors to be like shot onto the screen with some small amount of physics and then you're going to have to either burn them keep them or discard them according to their color and that'll be just like throwing them onto one or another side of the screen so it'll be like slightly velocity based throwing them around gameplay um but right now we need a font and that means we need to configure the grid i think i'm gonna make the font eight by eight and then I also want to show the grid, show grid, show grid, show grid. Okay, good. So we are going to get started. Oh, there's me. I'm going to get that away. Uh, ba -ba -ba. Here, here. I don't know why my tool options is messed up, but. Oh, do I not have my, okay. <laughs> Damn it, I guess we're gonna be using the first like 10 minutes on drawing a font. Um, Cause I don't seem to have any of my, uh, any of my fonts installed on this uh, account that I'm using, which is bad. And I don't even have, and my GIMP is also messed up. <laughs> this is off to a terrible start. And the chat is just cruising in the, in the side of my, uh, my eye over there. Okay. Okay, we need a 128 by 128 font image. We need layer with transparency. So right now, cause we need, we're going to need a bunch of text on the screen, so. Um, what am I doing? Uh, show grid. Okay, the grid is still eight by eight. Let me just create the base like sprite image right now. Uh, this is what this is what I'm going to be using for all of my sprite sheets. 
Because I think I'm going to need two of them, probably. Um, to do my game idea. Let's do that. And that. No, that looks bad. Not that it really matters. Yep, yeah, those are our two pinks. And then let's... Oh, that's a really bad second pink. I really, I really wish that my gimp wasn't messed up so I would be able to pick good colors. No, I want to, oh, why can I not select this properly? Uh, there we go. Okay, you know what? We're just gonna deal with the fact that the sprite sheets look like that. So, while I do this, um, I'm starting very bare bones on this. I don't know usually, so I think the vast majority of people that do the combo use engines um, and things like that. So I'm probably gonna be dedicating a lot of time to things like, for example, writing a font system. But the cool thing is that throughout these 48 hours, you know, you're starting everything almost entirely from scratch. Um, and you're only dedicating time to the most important parts of game development, such as putting together the world's ugliest sprite sheet. There we go. So, um, stream projects, assets. I'll just call it tile PNG, we'll place that one, and then we'll export another one called font. Um, and sorry if I'm not answering questions from the chat right now. I'm just, uh... oh, did I mess this up? Why is this messed up? Why does this look so bad in the sides? Is this the wrong size or what am I, what is going on? Is my grid wrong? Uh, uh, how do I configure my grid? Why is my grid 10 by 10? I am, I am never finishing. <laughs> I'm not, not going to finish a game at all. There's just no chance. Um, 48 hours and I spent half of it making my little sprite sheet here. Okay, there we go. That's much better. Those are much better to pinks. Only showing everyone the most important parts of game dev. So, yeah, <laughs> game speed run. So I'm probably, I'm actually almost definitely not going to stream the whole thing because that would, uh, as I said earlier, that would likely end me. Um, and then you would end up with well, two things. You'd end up with a very bad live stream and a very bad game. So I'm going to try and split the difference a little bit. And I think I'm going to stream uh, the start here today and then probably the end tomorrow. Um, so I can do a bunch of the boring stuff in the middle. Don't ask me about if I think that making a font sprite sheet is boring. This is obviously the most interesting part of this entire process. Okay, so we have 26 letters in the alphabet, then 10, so... And I really wanna make sure that I don't have... Do I not have any of my fonts? Can I really quickly... I really want to... Oh yes, okay, Google does have this font. Thank you, Google Fonts. I'm going to install this font really quickly. <laughs> and I think, yes, install. Great. Thank you, Ludum Dare, for I'm saving you got you all the uh, the pain of waiting for me to uh, to draw a font. What game framework are you using? I'm not using a framework. 
And uh, but but it is so actually I guess it depends on what you would classify exactly as a framework. Um, I'm using um, uh, SDL two. Uh, yeah, I'm using SDL two, and then I'm using Sokol for graphics, and then I'm using some of my um, utility libraries that I've like my C utilities that I've accumulated. Okay, I guess tool options is just gonna be floating here. Thanks for that one, GIMP. Um, here. There we go, A, B, C, D, E, F. <laughs> L, M, N, O, P, Q, is that 16 characters? No, that's one too many. Okay, Q is getting cut off there. Q, R, S, T, U, V, W, X, Y, Z. Yeah, every C programmer does have that big uh, bunch of utilities that they carry around with them everywhere. Um, okay, so we've got those and now we need... Ah, no Google fonts. Bad Google fonts. Um... Okay, I guess I just can't select the layer here. There we go. So we need that, that. Then we need zero, one, two, three, four, six, five, seven, nine. And then we need some special characters on our font atlas here. Uh, like these ones. I'm just gonna, it doesn't really matter what order these are in. I'm just gonna have it, uh, I'm just gonna program this in as a font atlas when we actually get to programming. See, here's the problem. My keyboard is entirely black. So I don't even know what, what I'm really missing. So I guess we'll use that as a good like set of starter characters. Yep, that is font. Uh, PNG, and we'll see if I feel like I'm missing any characters later. I oh, I'm missing square brackets at least. Uh, let's put those there. Okay, that's those are just gonna. I don't even know if, know if I'm gonna use square brackets. Okay, so time to code. Um, we need font H. So what do we want? We want a font string, which will do a string and that will draw it at a specific position with a specific Let's just, let's just start out by doing some character. So draw a character at a position with a color. Um, and then you have a specific character there. So how does drawing even work? Oh wait, we also want... Um, We also want a definitions file. Um, so, where we want that. So basically the only thing that I have to get started with is um, a I have a really basic sprite batch drawing library, um, which I wrote myself. Uh, I hope the keyboard isn't too loud. I can see everyone. <laughs> I, I hope that you can still hear me talking over the keyboard, but the microphone position to the keyboard is very close. Um, okay. 
So we want I'm just trying to avoid like um last year when I did the Ludum Dare, I got um I got RSI problems in my hand uh because oh uh I got, I literally got RSI problems in my hands because I was like typing too much, but that was also because I was also doing it in C and I had my, um, I, I'd written no utilities libraries and I ended up making, um, let me see if I can find it. Uh, yeah, here we go. This is my game for the last Ludum Dare. It's called uh, Precious Cargo and Some Aliens Trying to Steal It From You. So this is from about a year ago. Um, it's about, it's a basic tower defense game that I made um, using almost the same technologies, but it looks like this. Sorry if the, if it's way too loud. I'm gonna mute it so that it doesn't, uh, but yeah, it's a basic tower defense game. Um, so this is about like the the level of detail and everything that we're going for here. Uh, anyway, though, this this game gave me RSI writing it in one weekend. So we are going to try to avoid that. So um, we're going to try and find a character based on its index so what we need is we need static cause and then our lines are going to match up with this qrs tv wxyz and then we'll put the space there um like that then we'll have all of these special characters underscore plus my plus minus minus equals uh, do I have period yeah I have comma dot forward slash those two that that single then we need our double colon and like that okay so we need to find we need to convert the character um to an index so what we're gonna do is we're gonna do for um we need to do this and then we need to if Uh, or let's call this y, x is zero, x is less than, uh, he is lines y. So we're certain we're going to search through the, through the string. Well, Ah, so we need to do if that's the character that we're looking for. Otherwise, we're going to return a vec2 that's somewhere off in the distance. So that's just going to be like a square. Or maybe we'll do... We'll replace characters that we can't find with, uh, with question marks. So if it's a... Uh, if we find the character, then we return the vec2 of x and y. So the index is oh man, I really messed up the prototype for this. So we want like this. 
Z is C. Then we want color is color and flags is sprite. Uh, sprite no flags is what I call this. Great, so now we should be able to draw a single character on the screen. Um, so we need some, ah, uh, what do we need? We need a font atlas. So we need to load that. Oh man, we need, um, So the cool thing about this game thing that I'm writing here is, uh, uh, so it runs both in the web. You can see here, I've got a web browser up and then it also runs natively, like, uh, like seamlessly. But, uh, that means that pads get messed up. Mscripten, I actually don't know how you're supposed to say it out loud. Mscripten, 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 this, E-M, E-M-C-C, E-M-script in. Um, uh, it uses a forward slash before pads and uh, local pads don't do that. So we need to do this, so. If we are doing M script and else and if. So if we're doing M script and we need to return. Uh, what did I call this? Memories, string format, format is. So we need to prepend a slash to all pads. So. I'm not going to comment my code because I'm bad. Wow, I cannot type on Atlas. What did I call it? It's in assets. Okay. So this should work. That should not. Nope, that uh, doesn't want to build. Ah, what is going on? Oh, um, oh man, there's a problem with my utilities library. Uh, da, 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 da. I think I need to move this down here and hopefully that should fix things. Oh no, oh no. Error, unknown type, SGM, it's right to 15. Oh, well, um, let me just do it like this. This is gonna be a little borked, but now it should work. Yes, okay, good. So things are loading appropriately. Um, so let's try We need to make a sprite batch with a character. So sprite. Initialize the batch. Put it on the thread scratch allocator. And then it's gonna be the font atlas. Then we're gonna do font character. Just gonna push a character to the sprite batch. We need to include the header and it can't find it. Uh, what's our character? Let's draw an A. Give me an A. Let's draw it at 10, 10. The Z is zero. And we'll draw it as entirely white. And then here we're going to uh, What's the model matrix? The model matrix is null, like that. And that should draw a character onto the screen. I really hope, unless I've forgotten something. Okay, that's, um. oh, so 
This is because, yes, I'm using C. I'm not using C++. Um, this is because uh, our indices are flipped. So I think we need to do like that, right? And then that should, this should be an A now. Yes, okay, cool. We've got an A drawing, which is good. That is the first step to drawing um, to drawing some stuff on the screen. So this can be animated, of course. So if we do like, right, if we just slap a little cosine in there, now it's gonna wave back and forth like that. Yes. Um, I'm on the phone. The yeah, I'm sorry if you can't read this code, but because I'm going to be doing this for 48 hours, I need to be able to, uh, like, actually, uh, if the code was too big, my eyes would not uh, have a good time. So. <laughs> yes. Okay. Um, perfect. We've got our A there. So now we need to draw an entire string of characters. So let's call this font string and then there we go font string and then we'll have a base color so here also i want to introduce a uh do i want to introduce a palette system so the game is going to be pixel art um so i think we want a Palette. What's that one palette website that I always go to? It's low spec. Yes, low spec palette list. So I'm gonna grab a palette and find something. Let's do a 64 color palette. This will just make all of the making all of the art easier. Oh, this is the one that I usually use. I actually really like Resurrect 64. So this should be. Yes, let's do that. Actually, do I have, I think I have this palette saved somewhere. Oh, um. I am going to yoink the palette definitions. Nope, not particles. Let me see. Yes. Here is my palette. Great. Um, there we go. So these are all of our Palette colors. And so I think, where is our palette file? Do I have it here? Totally don't. Okay, let me do this. Is that, how do I do this? I want, the GIMP GPL of this palette. So let's import it into GIMP, which I do not entirely remember how to do. Man, I really could have planned all this better. Um, How do you import a palette into GIMP? GIMP experts in the chat, anyone want to help me? Uh, palettes. Uh, import palette, palette file. There we go. Okay, I think I've got it. Um, where is it? There we go. Resurrect 64. Okay, perfect. I've got the palette there. Now I just need to, I think the paint.net txt is what we need. Yes, 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 yes. Okay, beautiful. This is our 64 color palette.
Perfect. Yes, thank you for everyone in chat who's explaining along the way uh, what I'm using, <laughs> what sort of technology. SDL2, Sokol, I should probably just put it in the description, um, everything that I'm using, but there is no time for that right now. So, um, so, that's what our palette looks like. Uh, extern const u32 palette. Okay, great. So now we have our palette in there. So what we want is we want to draw a font string. So, um, So what I'm gonna implement here is a system where like, we could, we could, let me do this. We could have a string like this, A, B, C, D, E, F, but I also want you to be able to add control characters that will uh, select a specific uh, uh, palette index. So we had A, B, C, D, E, F, and then we said like 32. Well, actually, these are going to be hex character codes, but that will, this dollar sign 32 will switch the color over to the uh, 30 second uh, uh, palette index so that you can have basically like uh, character control codes in your, in your font. So. Uh, what do we want? We want well star P. Actually, maybe. Okay, I'm gonna implement the font really quick and then we're gonna actually get started on gameplay stuff. I've already used like an hour on the font system, but I feel like this the live streaming is so distracting. Um, okay. So if it's a dollar sign, then what we wanna do is, and I guess I'm not gonna use hex, I guess I'll just use integer stuff. Um, let's do this. all of the font processing. So we've got this. Man, I cannot type it all. This is uh, NeoVim and I'm using the Grovebox theme. Uh, so we have the position, the Z is Z, the color is color. Um, ba, ba, ba. So let's look at the next character. And if that's also a dollar sign, then it's escaped. Um, which means that we need to do an extra P++ to skip this character. Okay, this is gonna be very um, poorly implemented. Uh, 
So that's going to be a dollar sign. Otherwise, then we're expecting two characters that do the uh, font control code. So we're going to assert that P plus two is not the not the end. No, so the end is the last character. So here, let's have the end. Yeah, the end. This pointer points to the null terminator of the string. So assert that p plus two is less than the end. So we want. We're gonna assume that. Like that. Like this. So what this is going to do is this is gonna take, like this will take a string that looks like this, like dollar sign 32, and then it will convert it over to a, to an index. And we multiply the first by 10 because that's like the, you know, that's the place. <laughs> um, we need to implement some more stuff on our palette. We need to make a palette get function. So what are these colors? Are they A, B, G, R? No, they look to be R. They look to be R, G, B or A, R, G, B. Um, so we need to convert these We need to do this. So this is going to convert a palette index to a V4 is a vector four. Um, we're going to convert palette indexes, indices to, uh, colors and how are we going to do that? Um, we're going to get it in the palette from the index. And then we're going to return a vec4 made from. Um, A is always going to be 1.0. R is going to be uh, that top byte there. So we want it to look like this. And this is how we are converting our ah, colors. to RGBA, there we go. Then we have palette gets. Okay, cool. So now back in our font thing, then we want to switch the color. Here, so. Include the palette header and the color gets swapped. And then, so then we need to skip at least two characters. Otherwise, we just draw this character. And I have literally no confidence in this code because <laughs> writing it on stream is. <laughs> I'm, I'm, my, my brain is, I feel like my brain is melting. Um, and I'm programming in some errors. Unknown assert. Oh my gosh, assert H. There we go. And it seems to be complaining about some null somewhere because it's uninitialized. Oh, yeah, okay. 
Like I said, I have no confidence in this code at all. I really should also fix these. Unknown pragma ignored. Oh. Yeah, I think someone pointed that out in the chat earlier as well. Okay, let's see if this seg faults. That'll be fun. <laughs> um, let's try and draw a string. Well, it's fault. Uh, nope, it only draws the first character. Why does it do that? So font string, da, 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 da. Really? Does that actually not work? Can anyone catch why this is uh, entirely not working? Am I doing something like incredibly wrong? This is why you don't write code live on a live stream. Uh, what the heck is going on? I guess you don't even need this go to next, next character here. We can get rid of our go to's. Um, What on earth is happening? Is it updating things or is it not building properly? Like, oh wait, no, this is, am I losing it? Why is this not doing things properly? Um, B plus plus. This should work, right? Yeah, it's it's a it's a length of six. Oh, is it because they're not? No, wait, no, that doesn't make any sense. He's having an aneurysm. That is kind of what it feels like. Okay, so it should be drawing all of my different characters. Um, why is it not drawing more than one character? <laughs> that was my question. What is going on? This is like the worst thing that could happen during a game jam is... <laughs> the first thing that I'm trying to do is get my font system set up. But it's not, it's not working. What? <laughs> what on earth is happening? Is it not drawing all of the characters? Am I... <laughs> what is going on? So font character is pushing things onto the right batch. Um, and it's correctly finding the characters. I have a, I have a sneaking suspicion that like, So it says it, it claims to be drawing 15 sprites. But it is not drawing any of them. Or it's only drawing two of them. Um, yeah, let's try this where the position gets updated. Nope. Okay, let's just try this. Yep. 
That should draw the entire, no, that should draw the entire string in place. Oh my gosh, what? Am I, is this some weird M scripting thing? Or am I like, no, okay. Oh no, I closed my editor. Ah. <laughs> Um, oh wait, I don't even have my correct NeoVim binds over in this editor. That's really irritating. Um, why is this not working? <laughs> there should be draw and there should be drawing things to the right right uh, maybe you are looping by the wrong increment i don't think i am i think i'm i do not understand i think this is something uh is messed up with my um batching code. Um, I'm just gonna really quickly debug the sprite batcher because that's a really good way to use my time. Maybe I've accidentally imported like an old version of my library that doesn't want to draw all of the sprites, which would be really bad. Okay, something is really messed up with the way that I'm drawing the sprites. That is... Ooh, that is really bad. Um... <laughs> oh, man. How am I gonna fix this? <laughs> oh. Oh man, oh man, oh man, this is really bad. Uh, something is entirely messed up in my sprite drawing. Like something that not at all should be happening. I wonder if this also happens natively. Okay, it also happens natively, so- Oh my gosh, I keep closing my editor. <laughs> um... Is this like game over because my sprite batcher isn't working? <laughs> What is happening? What what is what is this? Okay, I'm really hoping that this is just like a tiny issue in my sprite batcher that I should be able to to find. Um Well, wait a minute. How is this even working in Mscripten?
Cause this shouldn't even load. Like. What is going on? <laughs> I, I really do not understand what is happening. Something is completely messed up with my sprite batch. <laughs> oh, this is terrible. Um, so we're appending to the instance buffer. And for some reason, I'm not able to draw multiple sprites the way that I should be able to. The images are getting uploaded correctly. The offset is correct. Mm, is this macro incorrect? No. So the model, the matrices are correct, but for some reason these sprites are getting messed up. Yeah, like these ones, these ones should all be regular old sprites, but they're not. So let me check, we're using the instance buffer. So the way that these things are getting uploaded is they're all sprite instances. Um, let me try this. Is it, the, is it the indices that are incorrect? That could be it. No, it's almost like it's accessing some sort of weird, like uninitialized memory. I think this is an alignment issue in the way that the data is being pushed into the pipeline. Which is really bad. <laughs> this, is, this is like possibly one of the worst things that I could have happen. Oh, no, that's not it. Shoot. I thought it was because the scale should be a scalar, but it's not. But that is not it. So the vertex step is per instance on the pipeline there. Oh, our image is correct. Is the... Oh, wait, 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 wait. No, that's not it. Shoot. Um, it's not the a scaling issue. You should understand how it renders it. Yeah. <laughs> See, that's the funny thing is I really should understand how this renders things. Um, Cause I wrote it like the other day. Um, but for some reason, and it was, it was literally, I had it working the other day, but this is so terribly classic that the second that you try and do something. What is the law? Like anything that can go wrong will go wrong. That's what's happening right now is this is going wrong and this is nuking. This is nuking my chance of actually making a game for the game jam. But I, I don't understand how things, maybe I'm missing some Sokol stuff that I'm just like not seeing. Yeah, it's Murphy's Law, yeah. But I don't, I don't understand why it's not drawing all of my sprites. Um, do I need to recompile my shaders maybe? Let me do this. Um, Uh, I'm gonna try and recompile my shaders. 
That didn't look like it changed anything, but let's just pray that that was the issue. No, that was not at all the issue. Uh, so my shaders are compiled correctly. Why are my... Is my offset incorrect? My view matrix is, is correct. The sprite thing should be correct. And it's obviously drawing multiple instances, right? But if I, so if I remove all of this stuff, let me remove all of the font things because it was working earlier with the just using I do not understand what is happening. Am I, no, my view and pro projection matrices. No, I'm not using the canvas. What is the theme for the game? The theme for the game is getting my font rendered to work right now so I can actually make the game. Uh, this is awful. <laughs> What on earth is wrong? Why can I not draw multiple instances? So is my, let me think. Okay, so I'm doing the pass. I'm applying the pipeline right there. I'm applying the bindings right there. I'm applying the uniforms right here. But that cannot possibly be the problem. We're doing a Sokol graphics commit there. Is it because, is there some sort of, oh, is it maybe a padding issue? Let me think, are these, oh, oh, wait, I think I have it. I think I have it, I think I have it. Um, it's because the stride is wrong. Please tell me that this is what was wrong. Come on, 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 come on. Yes. Okay, that was my issue. That was my issue. We are so back. So the problem is that when you're specifying how the memory, I have an instance, um, I have a buffer of a bunch of instances of of these sprites, sprite instances. And the problem was that the way that C is packing things or like you have a stride and the stride specifies how many bytes each instance occupies and the and I wasn't specifying the stride in the pipeline. So now all of these should work. Please, 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 please tell me that they work. Oh my, finally. Okay, jeez. Okay, cool, there we go. Now we're drawing multiple sprites. Wow, finally, we're all, we almost got the game done. Wow, that was the world's largest brain fart. And crazy that that was uh, just working before. Okay, so the font string stuff seems to be working. Let's try changing colors in the middle of the string. That's probably gonna crash, right? Hey, look, that works. We've selected color 10 in the middle of the string. Um, that should be, create a real dollar sign. Yep, that totally works. And then this dollar sign on the end should not crash things, right? Hey, okay, look, my font system totally works. Nice. Nice, 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 nice. Okay, so we want this, let me, I'm gonna pack all of this stuff nicely away in some parameters because we want this. We also want to be able to specify flags. because we uh, we 
also want to be able to double the font. So we want to be able to draw like a slightly darker version of things under uh, under the um, basically we want a background for all of our characters so things are a little more uh, readable. Like this. This. Uh, uh, uh. Let's um, This is maybe an entirely unnecessary refactor, but this should help things later on when we need to add more things to our font render. Why is that not working? Member type of font trend. Oh, it's because um, we want this like that. And then like this and like that. And now we should be able to go over here and these will give us some errors. this and that and that that should work right he's in sweden what kind of blasphemy is that i'm in denmark <laughs> absolutely not i am not in sweden Yes, it is not, I'm not US West Coast. Um, okay. <laughs> VCDF. Um, sorry, I just can't have anyone spreading pro Sweden propaganda in my chat. I am actually, you know, in terms of, uh, so that YouTube is happy with me, I'm neutral in terms of Sweden. Um, I won't say anything. I won't say anything anti Swede. Uh, what on earth were we doing? <laughs> um, I want this, so I want to be able to double the font so that to get a slightly darker version of the font. So we want we want to in an ideal world I would um, put make sure that these colors are already are like properly in the palette that we're working with, but I'm not gonna be doing that. That should work. So now we should have a doubled version of the font under, oh yeah, we need to um, do this. There we go, okay. And then we need to do the 
we need to make the Z slightly lower and then we should have, that should be, yep, look, look, look at that. Now we have our font uh, rendering appropriately with it, like a little double thing in the background. Okay, so we are going to, honestly, I don't know what he is doing. I don't know what I'm doing either. So, uh, Game Jam, weird making a game about summoning where your boss was summoned to court um, and you are the, uh, uh, like the lawyer that's, or not the lawyer, you're part of like the legal team in a giant corporation. I think the game is going to be called um, Big Giant Mega Corp. And what you're doing is you're doing three things because you need to protect your boss because you're part of uh, you're part of the legal team of the company. You need to burn evidence so that he doesn't. your boss doesn't get convicted. You need to liquidate witnesses uh, to see it in a nice way. And you need to bribe the jury, the judge, uh, and anyone else that has anything to do in the trial. And this is going to happen in three small mini games, depending on how much time. Like, this is not promising at all, given that the jam started seven hours ago, and this is all I've got. But, um... We'll see how many mini games I can end up making. The first thing is going to be about um, burning evidence. Um, so what's going to happen is there's going to like evidence is going to get shot onto the screen, and um, you are going to uh, fling it away to to burn it. Um, yes. Uh, I know that it's not very good of me to be like so distant from the uh, from what the theme should be, but I'm not a terribly big fan of this theme, so I'm just going to try to make something. Yes, I know my game looks terrible right now, so let's fix that. I am going to start by um, going to. Here, and then I'm going to draw some... Oh wait, we also need... I'm gonna draw some little... Some evidence papers. There we go. There we go. Um, but I want them to be in the... Palette. Well, I guess this is the palette editor, but that'll be fine. Um... Oh my gosh, I really do not want to deal with uh, with GIMP today. Let's see. So these will be the edit uh, evidence papers that you're flinging around. Maybe maybe two lines in between each is good. Does that look like evidence? That looks like <laughs> kind of like a paper. Um, I, I really don't like the color, but... Um, it's too like skin colored, almost. Yeah, no, I'm gonna go with the old colors. That's way too dark, though. I really wish GIMP would stop uh, selecting things. Yeah, let's go with something like this. Um, there we go. So let's make... Two kinds of evidence for everything, maybe? I guess we'll just start by getting one drawn. Um, so, we need to be able to draw multiple sprites. Um,
So we want to be able to draw because there's a problem because this is like part of a um ah, what's the word this is part of like a larger sprite sheet but we need it to be like a smaller um thing basically so we because we're only able to draw eight by eight sprites and we need to be able to draw a larger 16 by 16 one so let me do this Oh wait, these are, um, I picked the wrong end of the sprite sheet for these. Let's do this. They're gonna be down here. And then we wanna get those drawing on the screen and then we wanna be able to fling them around with the mouse. So, push sub image for drawing. So this is gonna push the, we're gonna be able to draw something larger than the size of one sprite with these because these are bigger than one sprite. So let's push sub images uh, box. So then the UV minimum Basically we want to be able to specify some sprite coordinates on this sheet and then draw like where or like pixels sorry um, like this. And then basically we will ignore whatever else was specified in the sprite. So sprite batch push sub image. And then we want, we need to load a new atlas. Add a new sprite batch using the uh, main atlas. specify this box from a position and a size. So that should do the trick, I believe. Um, oh, but we need to also draw the sprite batch. There we go. Hey, okay, that's somewhat progress. For some reason, it's not drawing uh, anything larger than that. Oh, it's because the scale is. So the scale needs to be um, like that. That should fix things. Now it should be drawing the entire... Yes, there we go, okay. There's our first uh, evidence paper that we're going to have to have to burn. I think also I'm going to make the screen a little larger. 
we need a good 16 by 9 resolution though. So let's see. Maybe we'll do 256 by 144 because there's going to be a rather large amount of text in this game. So I want things to be readable. There we go. That looks uh, that looks a little better. So um, I guess I want things to look a little more 3D. I really wish GIMP would stop registering all of my clicks as doubles. So let's do that. So that these evidence papers look slightly more convincing. There we go. And now I want to be able to drag this around. So we've got the global game state here. I guess we want a Let's do this. A paper which has a position, it's got a 2D velocity. Um, it's got a, so we need to be able to fling these, fling these papers around. And then we need, so I'm gonna have a big old list of papers and then what will we do? Um, you grab a paper. Currently selected. Paper, null if not. Present. I guess the first thing that we're gonna do, so it's got a position and a velocity. Yes. Everyone in chat, uh, please behave yourselves. <laughs> I'm asking you all nicely, which I know can have the opposite effect, like, but I'm asking everyone to be very nice. Um, we also need, uh, This is going to be, I'm going to create a memory arena of uh, to last, we need two memory arenas. We need one memory arena that's going to last the, um, the duration of the game and one memory arena that's going to last. Like this will be the lifetime of the game. This will be the la each frame. So Let's create our memory arenas. And this is all stuff that's very specific to my own um, uh, C library. My, my own like personal um, Uh, C utilities library, but which which actually will be released on the uh, because everything with the Ludum there needs to be open source. So if you check out my GitHub after uh, on Monday, you should be able to see the source code for this entire game. Um, so heap allocator init. We also need to destroy our heap allocator. Yeah, and that should destroy that memory arena. Okay, so, and then, oh, we also need um, each frame, we need to reset the frame arena. Frame arena gets reset to a maximum of 32 kilobytes. every frame. So we've got our block list. Um, so here also I'm using a block list, which is a data structure that I use in some of my other games, which is basically like, 
It's like a vector, if you know what a C++ vector is, but the it guarantees index stability so and pointer stability. So that your pointers, if you put something in the list and then you remove something, your pointers cannot and will not uh, move around. Um, which is good for game objects. Uh, what else do we need here? Are those all of our parameters for the block list? Yep, looks like it is. So, Add a new paper and then let's draw all of our papers. Um, so we're going to iterate over this list of things. Like that. And this should hopefully work and not seg fault. Okay, there's a little paper there. Great, so I'm gonna separate out the frame into a render phase and an update phase. And then I think on the global context i'm gonna put two sprite batches don't spam in the chat thank you um don't spam in the chat otherwise i'm gonna have to put everyone on slow chat and that will not be fun um, so we need at the start of every frame, we also need to create our sprite batches. So everything in this entire game is just going to get drawn in two big old batches of sprites, uh, one for fonts and one for everything on this sprite sheet. Um, so that things will be uh, neat and organized. And we can ba -ba -ba, do things like this. And then when we render the game, we just well, draw like this, which should, this should display the same thing. Cool. That looks like it's displaying the same thing. So, um, so when we're rendering like that, so we also need to do So we need to check if we're uh, in the range of this paper to be able to fling it away. Um, so let me think. The I want to be able to check when the mouse is around the paper. So first we actually need to make sure that our mouse position is correct. So let me check that that's right. Mm. So what do we want? We want update render each frame. No, that's part of render. 
And then an update, we want to get the mouse position. Mouse is at... Let's see if the mouse position is correct and we can actually use it. Much love from France. Much love back to France. <laughs> uh, yeah, it looks like our mouse position is correct relative to the screen, which is solid. Um, great, so we want to be able to get a box around the paper. So I'm gonna have the, how big are our papers? They are 11 by 14. So um, so we can get the box around the paper and then what we can do is we can say, like this and then we're gonna have we're gonna darken it if we're mousing over so if um, uh, input cursor position should we work with everything in pixel coordinates or should we do floating point coordinates I think I'm going to do loading point coordinates right now. Let's do it like this. And now we should be able to see when the mouse is inside of the paper, please. Yes, okay, good, 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 good. So it feels like it's slightly off, but I'm not gonna worry too much about that right now. Um, yes, so now we want to be able to click and drag. So we want to be able to in our update. So Uh, our click is input get so some so if we're clicking and the mouse collides with this then we want to set the selected paper to be this paper, right? Um, and we also want let's call it cursor paper P and then we want um, let me think. We want like the mouse delta from the current position or how do we want to do this? We want to be able to like fling it in certain directions. Um, so we need to like We need to have some sort of cursor velocity uh, to fit, to find out what velocity to apply when we like flick the papers around. Um, and then we need to figure out where we are drawing the paper. So I think the delta is going to be the accumulated cursor delta. So 
but let's do this and then we'll have it um, like this. So, so if when the mouse is released, uh, so let's do it like this. If the mouse is released and we currently got a paper then we want apply fling velocity we want to apply the fling velocity to the paper um and but we want to Set it to null. So and we haven't got anything selected. Otherwise that. So, and then if we have like this, am I being silly? Is this gonna work? I feel like this is gonna crash. Hey, look at that, we can move the paper around. So I'm selecting and moving things around. It's a little iffy. Ooh, our cursor position is really bad. I wonder if that's a problem. Let me make the boxes slightly larger. Okay, so now what we want is we want to be able to apply some sort of velocity uh to the paper so um oh we need to start calculating some kind of delta time uh so let's Go here, g time dot now is uh, there. So now we have a delta time, and then what we need to do is uh, ba -ba -ba -ba. so the position gets the delta of the, so the velocity scaled by the current delta time which is that and then we need to scale the um, velocity of the paper I think I'm gonna lock this to 60 FPS right now just for testing and then we can deal with that later. So, um, let's see what a velocity of three will initially do to this. Will it, okay, that doesn't, does not help at all. What about a velocity of 20? Okay, things are literally not moving. 
Um, maybe it's because things are really slow. Okay, yeah. Oh, um... Oh man, I'm really not sure how to... How do you calculate friction with delta time? I think, yeah, okay, so... I'm gonna accept whatever this person on Stack Overflow is saying. Um, let's do this. That seems really bad. Anyone know how to do friction with delta time? I feel like my brain should be able to do this, but I cannot focus enough right now. <laughs> yeah, it's because our, our delta time is just like way too slow. Right, let's just do... Um, So we'll scale times, um, how much, I guess, I guess it's locked into 60 frames per second right now, isn't it? So, oh, am I going to make this game frame rate, frame rate dependent? I think I am. Yeah. Let's do that so that things can get flung around a little bit. Or we want we want to scale like the uh, friction by the magnitude of like how fast it's moving. So, but let's let's just keep it like that for right now. Yeah. Okay. So, um, or actually, what we want is we don't even want that. So we want. Um, we want to make, we want to like attract the paper to the cursor while we're moving it. So we want to like apply some sort of like velocity to it. So so what's the, what's the direction to the cursor? So we want, we want to get some sort of offset. we're selecting it. Uh, so we want the direction from the position of the paper to the like that, right? The offset and then we want to track the offset. Um, so the velocity, the direction is going to be the difference between the the base and the target, and then we want to make the velocity the direction towards the cursor. Like that. This is definitely not gonna work. Yeah, okay.
Um, we want this. Ah, like that. We want to scale this by distance. Like that. So now we've got it like slightly following the paper or the cursor. Well, we've got it selected. Then we can fling things. So we want like this. There we go. Um, what's the stack? The stack is C, Sokol, and some utility libraries that I've got. Um, the pitch is that your uh, the theme for the game jam is summoning, and the the pitch is that. <laughs> okay, that totally works. Sweet. Um, and the pitch is that your boss, your corporate. Uh, you're on a corporate legal team and your boss has been summoned to court for some sort of corporate wrongdoing and um, Your job is to make sure that they don't get sentenced not that they would get sentenced anyway But that's the fun part of the game. Oh, I just lost some shaky notes So this part of the game is going to be about burning evidence So this is a little bit of evidence and you're gonna have to fling it um, you're gonna have to fling it into 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 some fire. You're basically gonna have to sort uh, sort evidence. Um, yes, and that's uh, and that's what you're doing. That's the first a goofy but fun game idea. That is kind of the that's kind of the the gist. That's what I'm trying to do. So I think. Whoop. Oh wait. Oh yeah, okay, so now, so we also want to apply the fling velocity. So we, we want to give some exit velocity whenever you like leave, whenever you drop things. So we're going to do We're gonna normalize the cursor motion. Actually, let's just scale the cursor motion by 10. Would that be, is that gonna be too crazy? No, that won't. So we actually want some sort of like, ah, what do we wanna do? Is that going to be? Oh, okay. That, <laughs> that totally did not work. Mm. I just want to add like a slight boost in the velocity. You should be able to fling things appropriately. Okay, but we also need them to bounce now. So, do, 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 do. how do we check that? So, um, when we're moving the position, we want to do if, Well, basically like this should just bounce it off the left side, right? <laughs> oh, that totally works. Okay, that's pretty good. Um, uh, let's do this.
like that. This is definitely some of the worst code that I've ever written, but that is fine. That's the point of a game jam. Uh, this is not my first game jam, no. But it's the first one where I've live streamed it. Uh, okay, there we go. Now we are, we've got some evidence and we're flinging it around. Oh, okay. And we're flinging it around. There we go. We also want the... Um, We want the restitution to be like some high number. Ah, restitution like that. Oh yeah, okay, wait, so. What we actually want is this, and then we want to do. Oh, wait, I can't. Oh, this is gonna be a pain. Should I just do the, should I just clamp based on position? I think I'm gonna do that because otherwise things get um, very complicated. Actually, wait, no, I, I don't need to do that. Um, we want to do this to check the, the target with, and then we want to check like that. There we go. And then we check, so this should fix our bouncing problem in the sides, like that. Yep. Now we have some evidence bouncing around and you can you can fling it with your mouse cursor. Pretty good. Okay, great. Um So, evidence is bouncing around. You're flinging it with your mouse cursor. What else do we need? Um We need you never read the chat? Well, I'm trying to uh, also do a game jam at the same time. And as I said at the in, at an earlier part in the stream, either I'm going to, this is going to be a, I don't want this to end up being a very boring stream where I don't end up making anything. <laughs> so I need to not focus on the chat too much. There we go. Um, okay, so now you are able to bounce this piece of evidence around. It's not, it's not perfect. I guess I'm gonna have... <sighs> okay, I can make this, I can make this better. Um, better later. So we want to burn evidence. So let's, instead of B, C, D, E, F, let's have this be... We need to calculate the whoop. Want to calculate the width of our uh, font string. Uh, 
like this. Because I'm gonna have it centered and say burn evidence up there. Um, ba -ba -ba. Current equals zero, width is the maximum of current and width. There we go. There we go, now we have the width of our font string, so now we should be able to B, C, D, E, F. Burn evidence. It will say at the top. And then our position on the Y axis is the target width minus the font width. Whoop. Neovim bugging out a little bit there. Title divided by two, and then this is gonna be target height divided by, or minus 10. Result of integer division used in floating point expression. I guess we can do that. There we go, now it should say burn evidence at the top of the screen. Yes, perfect, burn evidence. Uh, I think we need to move that. Our font is a little messed. Oh, this entire row of characters is messed up, actually. I need to move all of those down. Ah, where is my... Gimp, where are my layers? Oh, there they are. Okay, let's merge down, merge down, merge down, merge down. Merge down, there we go. Um, let's move all of these down one. There we go. Perfect, burn evidence. And that, that should actually be, um, well, well, we'll work out the Z levels later, but. So, um, what else is the rendering? Da, 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 Okay. So we need evidence to be shot in from the side. I'm gonna make flinging this more fun later. It's gonna be about like, because right now it's just we're just taking the ending velocity of the paper and then just applying that, but I th I actually want to be able to like uh, if you move the cursor larger, you should be able to flick it uh, even further. So, um, what else do we need to do? We need to. I have more evidence that gets shot in from the sides. So let's do, we need a global random. Oh, thank you for the donation. I will uh, try to remember to stay hydrated. Um, I think you're going to be sending, so someone's asking how are you, how are we going to burn evidence? We're going to, um, uh, put it, there's going to be a little, a fire pit, I think. Um, probably, <laughs> but we'll, we'll see how that, how that goes. So let's spawn some evidence in. So let's have a 0.5 second. Uh, 
or a 0.5, sorry, a 5% chance per frame that um, some new evidence will be added. Let's just do the middle right now. And then let's have the velocity. Be some random direction. Like that. Okay, that's a lot. That's way too much evidence. <laughs> um, whew, that's a lot of evidence to burn. Okay. Um, yeah, that is a hundred percent chance. But for some reason, it's not spawning in with any velocity. Even though the random vec2 direction should be doing that. So maybe the velocity is not getting updated? Or something like that? But I can't imagine... You can fling them around quite well, which is uh, which is good. Yeah, boss man is definitely in trouble. That's why you're burning the uh, the evidence. Um, why are we not able to fling things around? Maybe the random direction is wrong. Oh, maybe the random direction is wrong. That's really weird. Um... Oh, for some reason the random directions are always zero. Oh, it's because I'm using... Oh man, um... How do I want to do this? Well, let me just... This is... Uh... That's because I'm using some extra fast uh, trigonometry functions which require that I actually init my own uh, initialize some trigonometry tables, which I'm not doing, but I'm not gonna worry about that right now. Okay, there we go. Now we're, we've got a ton of evidence spawning in. Um, which looks pretty good. <laughs> so let's do this. So what we actually want to do bit too much evidence yeah <laughs> so what we actually want to do is we want to pick a we want to pick a pop position on the on the edge of the screen basically so So, so let's have it be, well, we want it to come in from the, from the left or the right or the bottom. We don't, the, the shredder is going to be up on the top. So I think, or the, the fire pit will be up on the top. So I think we'll have, um, ba, ba, ba. so for a 
Yeah, let's do 55% chance. Let's do like a 40% chance that the evidence will come from the bottom sides. So half a chance that it's gonna be zero, otherwise it's gonna be target width minus five. Let's say, and then it's gonna be some random float with a minimum of that. Uh, like that, so sides, otherwise the bottom, the X, Let's have it start at zero. The exposition is gonna be zero or target width minus a little bit. Great, and then we wanna fling it to a direction towards the center. So we, ba -ba -ba. direction the from is gonna be position, the two is Like that. This should start spawning some. Ev oh no, that's not gonna work. Whoop -a -ba. Like that. Now this should work. There we go. Now we've got some evidence coming in from the sides. <laughs> okay, I want it to be. Uh, Slightly more violent though. This is C. So then what we want is we want to fling it out some way. Yes, this is uh, this is C. Um, I want to um, draw a fire. I also need a background for this. Um, I don't know how that should work either. I guess well, let's let's get some multicolored evidence going, and then I might take a little tiny little break. Um. So type def enum So we have uh no this is not yeah the background should be carpet. I was thinking the background should maybe be a desk. Oh yeah, should the fire be a cigarette lighter? We'll so we'll see. We'll see what I'm able to do. So the paper type will be you either have Evidence, you have discard, keep. You have three kinds of, three kinds of paper types. And so then in the render, From the color, we want to sub that so that you can see when you're selecting it. Yeah, currently the entire game is more or less a single C file. So, um, let's draw three kinds of evidence. So, 
The ones we want to discard, I feel like they should be red. Oh man, please Gimp, stop selecting things like this. Or the, these should be the, the ones that we should, um, that we should burn. Like that. And then the ones that we want to keep, I think I'm gonna make them blue. And I think that is correctly a line, but we'll see like that. And then I guess I could just recolor things in the, uh, in the edit, in the, uh, game engine, but this will keep things on palette. Okay. So then we have three kinds of ev evidence. So then what we want is the X is 16 times the type. So we have no, we have, sorry, we have discard evidence key. There we go. Um, and then we want So evidence should be red colored, right? When it comes up now. Yes, there we go. So those are the ones that we want to burn. And then we have, and then we're gonna have some of the other ones that we want to keep. Let's, um, let's do that. So the, Why can I not make a rand? Oh, it's called a rand N, of course. Um, like this. There we go. Now we've got some random evidence coming in. So this one you will want to keep, and that'll probably go over there. This one you'll want to discard. This one you'll want to fling up in the top. And basically the objective of this mini game or maybe I don't know how much time I have, depending on how well I do. This might be the whole game. Um, we'll see. But you'll have to uh, you'll have to fling them around, basically. Are you gonna fix the drag system? Yeah, I'm gonna fix the uh, the all of this. Uh, I just can't focus too well while I'm on stream. But speaking of, um, I think I'm gonna take a tiny little break and see if I can actually focus a little bit on this. Um, I think I'm gonna end the stream for now and probably tune in with everyone and check in at a later point uh, to make sure that I actually get something done for this game jam. But yes, boo, I know, yes, okay. <laughs> Sorry I'm not streaming 48 hours while I'm sleeping and everything too. Thank you everyone for wishing me good luck. I will be tweeting out. Uh, when I'm streaming and when things are done. Um, but honestly, I'm probably not gonna get too much sleep or anything like that. I think I'm just gonna try and uh, uh, power through and see what I, can, uh, what I can make in 48 hours. So thank you everyone for tuning in to my little stream. I think I'm gonna be doing more little streams uh, later. We'll see. Anyway, thanks everyone for tuning in. Uh, thanks everyone for watching and I will, uh, I'll see you hopefully, I might be streaming tomorrow, we'll see. I might, I might stream a little bit depending on how things are going and how much uh, I feel like I need to focus on the game jam, but we'll see. This might also be a video, who knows? All right. <laughs>